everyone. Um, my name is Gabby Sparts and I'm a full-time Magic the Gathering streamer. And one of the questions I most get asked is, how do I build my collection? I'm new to Magic Arena and I want to, you know, collect my cards and do that. What is the best way to um, go about that? So I thought today I could film a video to kind of show you some of the best ways to um, get gold, get gems, grow your collection, especially if you're new to Arena. And even if you've been playing for a little bit, maybe you'll get some tips out of this. Um, before we get any further, though, this video is brought to you by Wizards of the Coast. So thank you so much, Wizards, for sponsoring this video. Um, and without further ado, let's show you Arena. All right, so we are in my MTG Arena account. If you first sign up, you'll have to play through a tutorial and then you can do this thing called the color challenge too, which I very much recommend you do. The color challenge, um, hold on, let me go here, it's over here. They basically give you different decks that you can try to play. Um, you can kind of see the different decks you can play, one for each different Planeswalker. And these will both give you cards slash show you um, kind of like the ropes of how to play Magic. So I very much recommend playing this in the tutorial to um, get a better understanding of Magic. But once you've done that, how do you get your gold and how does that, and gems and how does that work? So there's two different types of currencies on MTG Arena. There's gold and there's gems. Gold is the more readily available currency. Um, it's basically the free currency slash the currency that you get for most of the things you do in the game. Um, then there's also gems. You can see I have 3,500 gold and I have 27,000 gems. The gems are basically like money that you paid for. Um, there are ways to get gems from just the game, um, but there's very few ways to do that. I'll show you how to do that. So basically, uh, when you log in, you'll see this. You'll have these daily quests. They all have rewards. So you see this one has, if you kill 25 of your opponent's creatures, you'll get 750 gold. You'll see also that there's a little like spinny sign on this. Um, that means that you can reroll the quest. So there's a lot of quests that are for 500 gold. There's a lot of quests for 750 gold. The 750 gold quests usually require you to do a little bit more. Like you can see this one is... 25 of your opponent's creatures for 750 and these are like 20 blue or black spells so usually the quests um that are 750 require you to do a little bit more work but they'll give you 250 more gold so it's almost always a free roll to reroll one of these um because you might upgrade into a 750 so let's see if i get lucky ding dong oh there you go so now i have that quest available to me and now this one is for 750. you only get to reroll one quest a day so that's something to keep in mind because, you know, you can't just like keep rerolling until you get all 750. But every time that you get a 500, um, you, you can, and, and it's not a quest that you're like particularly attached to, you can reroll it to try to get a little bit more gold from it. Um, you get one of these a day and you can have max three. So if you haven't logged into Arena in three days, those quests are basically just going to disappear. So that's a good thing you want to keep in mind. You can come in, you know, knock out all your quests and then leave some room for them to accumulate and then you can come back and then do those quests. So aside from these three quests, you have these, which are your daily win rewards. And these actually scale down, like it's 250 now, then it goes down to like 100. Um, you can get a max of 15. So after you get 15 daily wins, you're not really getting like that many more rewards per day. So that is a good goal if you want to like play a little bit every day and you want to make sure you're getting your gold out of it. 15 is a good number um, of wins specifically. <laughs> This over here are your weekly wins. So the weekly wins give you experience and experience helps you level up. Um, you can get uh, the weekly wins in you know, standard play, ranked modes, or events. You can get 15 max. So if you are playing within the week, you almost always want to make sure you hit those 15 um, so you maximize your experience. What does experience do for you? It helps you level up. So let me show you here. These are the rewards that you would get from leveling up. Let me show you the way the mastery pass works. So this is a Theros mastery, and this is all true as of the Theros expansion. So um, this might be different if you're watching this in the future and they've changed the way the arena economy works. But basically you have two tracks. You have the free track, which is the one up here, and then you have the paid track, which is the paid one down here. So how does this work? Um, if you buy the mastery pass, and the mastery pass is, I want to say, 3,400 gems. Yeah, it's 3,400 gems you basically get to unlock this bottom tier. And so as you level, you'll get the things that it tells you. So let's go back to the beginning. Like, let's say the set just came out. Um, when you're level one, you don't get anything if you didn't pay anything. And when you're level two, you get a, a Theros booster. 
three nothing for booster and it kind of just keeps going like this and you also get these things called the mastery orbs i'll show you what they do in a second if you actually buy it which by the way i think is totally worth doing um you get a couple of things you get like an elspeth avatar a special sleeve you get these pets that sh they're just cosmetic but they show up in your match and you can like interact with them you can click on them and stuff if you get to level two you get a daybreak chimera like foil essentially like full art extended um, you get a Guilds of Ravnica booster on level 3. So you can see that you actually get rewards for every part of the tier. If you want a general like benchmark, if you make it to about level 80 of a Mastery Pass, you will have recouped what the, like, the gems that you spent to buy it. So you don't always have to get to level 100 for it to be worth it. You can actually just like end up at level 80 and it would have been worth your money. Um, so what are these mastery orbs? They're for the mastery tree. These are basically just cosmetics. Um, I don't have any available right now. They show up here if you have them. But these are all the Theros gods. So if I had another one, I could put it right there. And I would get that Nylea keen-eyed, like the full art extended border. And then I would be able to play with that alternate art. So it doesn't do anything other than look pretty. But it does look pretty nice. So um, yeah. Yeah. As you level up, you'll start unlocking these things, and then these booster packs also really help you, you know, in the effort of growing your collection. All right, one last thing on the Mastery Pass. If you are unsure about whether or not you want to get it, uh, you have to know that it is retroactive from the point at which you buy it. So let's say you're currently level 68 here on the free track, and you decide, you know what, I'm like moving along really well on this Mastery Pass. I actually would like all the previous rewards. If you buy it then, it'll give you all the rewards that you would have earned up to that point. So even if you decide to do it all the way up in like level 100, you can still go ahead and get Jules. <laughs> you can still go ahead and go back and get all your rewards. You have to do it while the mastery pass is out and active um, because once like Ikoria will be the next set after Theros mastery, once you know, once Theros is out and Ikoria comes in, there's a new mastery pass for Ikoria. So you want to make sure that you do decide to do that while it's around. So let's talk about different game modes. The most important one as far as gold goes is best of one draft. Uh, oh, by the way, here there's a toggle where you have some arena play modes and then you have all play modes. You usually want all play modes. It hides some of the other events if you don't do. I've had people be like, I can't see a play mode. It's because of that toggle. So let me show you. Uh, where is it? Ranked Draft Ravnica Allegiance. So there's two kinds of draft on Arena. There's best of one and best of three. Best of one draft, you just play one game. You never sideboard. You know, usually you have a, in Magic, you have a 15 card sideboard. You never sideboard in these events. Best of three tends to be a little bit more competitive and you do play with sideboards. So take a look here. Ranked Draft Ravnica Allegiance. It does show you that you have two different ways of entering. You can enter with 750 gems or 5,000 gold. This is the only event in Arena as of when I recorded this where you can spend gold to get gems. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you have like a ton of gold, this is the event that you can use to try to transform that gold into gems. So the other thing that's nice about draft is that it guarantees you have at least three it's actually four packs because three for the draft. And even if you don't get any wins, you're always guaranteed a pack. So you actually have four packs that are guaranteed. And then you can see as this goes up, your reward goes up too. So, you know, you got two wins, you get 100 gems in one pack. All the way up to here, um, you see that in between five, six and six, five wins and six wins, that's kind of when you get your money back and you get to go infinite, quote unquote. Um, so that's best of one draft. Um, there's also a traditional draft. Let me show you. I have a ticket entry, which you can get these random ways. Um, usually you'll just have the option for 1500 gold. So you'll also see it's like twice as expensive as joining a best of one draft. But you can also see that this this is a little bit more difficult. Like, dra like having to sideboard and limit it is a little bit more difficult, which means that this reward or that this event um, is higher cost, but also can have higher payouts. If you get all the way up to three wins, you'll make your money back and then you have a chance to go up to like 2,500 gems. So once you get a little bit better at drafting, especially if you're brand new, um, switching from best of one to traditional is something that you can do to kind of get more out of your drafting experience. Um, you do play... Uh, each of these are a best of three match, so you sideboard in between, and you only actually get to take two losses here. You you get two losses and you're out. 
Um, in best of three, it's three losses and you're out. So those are both the drafting modes. Then there's a couple of other modes. Some of them rotate, some of them don't. Um, mainly you have over here, this is, this is just brawl event. Uh, standard events, you can also use gold to join. Um, just as a general guideline, I would always, 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 when you can join an event with gold, join it with gold and not gems. The reason is because gold is just way more easy to get and it's easily available. Um, almost everything you do in Arena gets you gold, but very few things actually get you gems. So if you have the choice here, I would always join with gold. Um, another way to get your daily wins, wins, weekly wins, or just to play ranked draft, or sorry, to play ranked constructed. So... Let me show you where that is here. So you can see standard ranked, um, this is best of one, and then traditional historic ranked, or sorry, traditional standard ranked, this is best of three. Same is true for historic. Historic is out right now. When you're watching this video, you might not see historic. This is a play mode that's kind of like in and out. It's not always, it's not always around and available, but it follows the same like naming convention. So historic ranked and traditional historic rank. So historic ranked is best of one, traditional historic ranked is best of three. That's the difference. Um, you can also get your daily, like your rewards and stuff by playing with your friends. So if you do have any of your friends, you can just challenge them over here. Um, and then you can get your, you know, like your black or green spells and your wins and stuff. You can get it that way too. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, should I use, uh, which pack should I buy? And should I use my gold to buy packs? And my general advice here is you should not. Um, why is that? Basically, a lot of people I feel get paralysis where they feel like they need to be much better at magic before they start playing. Like they say, like, I don't want to play a draft. I'm just going to play like two games and then be immediately out. But my advice to that is you're not going to get better if you don't try it. You're not going to get better by not playing. So I think it's honestly a lot better to save your gold because when you enter a draft, you just get those packs anyway. You're going to get to actually pick cards out of three packs and then all those cards from draft, you actually get to keep. So not only are you getting more experience and practice playing draft, you also get to keep these cards for your collection afterward, right? And the same is true for your, for like any standard events. Um, people People would rather just like crack packs and... I think you get a little bit more out of just like the experience of playing the standard matches and like trying to get better at magic that way. Because the better you get at magic, the the more rewards you get Where to get to this point where you eventually go infinite, right? Where you're like entering something, but you're always getting enough wins that you can always re keep rebuying your entry into it. Um, the cool thing about packs though is that they do help you like... Here's, here's another thing that people find confusing. You can't actually use these packs you have here for draft. Like when you enter into a draft, you get three new packs and none of these will ever interact with those. So the ones that you have here, all they do are just fun to crack. So for example, let's crack one here. Um, and my rare was Storm Herald. So I don't know if you noticed, as soon as I did that, all of this filled out and it gave me a wild card. So that means that this is an uncommon wild card that I can use in the future. How do wild cards work? You can burn one wild card to craft something of the same rarity, any card. So this is a Timurit Chosen from Death. If I wanted another one, I could use that wild card, that uncommon wild card I just got to craft a second Timurit Chosen from Death. Um, it works a little bit different with rares and mythic wild and mythics. Uh, for example, this one, look, this is a rare wild card and I'm currently one, two, three boosters in. If I crack this, this one went up to four. And so when this completes, I will get this rare wild card and I will bank it and it'll show up here. And now I will just have this and I can use it whenever I want. Um, so you would keep doing that. I don't think I have enough packs to actually get this. Yeah, so I'm gonna be short a little bit to get that wild card, but that's okay. And now all of these cards have been added to my collection too, so whenever I want a deck build, I can use those. So that's kind of the thing about the packs. Um, if you do, the, the one exception is if you do need some wild cards or you were very close to building a deck that you want and you're missing a couple things, yeah, it's totally cool to buy packs if you're doing it in that, in, in that spot. I just more recommend that you use your gems and your gold to... Um, buy entry into events because that's how you actually get the fun out of magic, right? You actually get to play the games as opposed to just like trying to build a deck um, and using all your gems that way. 
Um, and, uh, oh yeah. And then the last thing is just one thing that people ask me about all the time and it's how to get, you know, started building your first constructed deck. Um, that can be hard sometimes, uh, especially because constructed decks, especially when they're competitive, can have a lot of wild cards. And if, if you're starting, you're just new to MTG Arena, you're not going to be able to have all those wild cards available. So one of the things I would recommend is building a monocolored deck. So like mono green stompy, mono blue flyers, uh, mono, mono white weenie, um, like black aggro or something like that and I'm not even naming decks that are these decks all exist in the current metagame but like these are just decks that are almost always in the metagame because they are you know easily accessible and you don't have to spend wild cards on lands so. thanks again for watching everyone I hope this is helpful to anybody who's getting started with MTG Arena I did have one last piece of advice um, if you are brand new to the game you get access to this thing called the new player bundle you'll see it in the store uh, it is one of the best things that you can buy, especially if you're just getting started, because it's a really good rate. It's only like $5, but it gives you a bunch of stuff. So um, if you have that available to you, I, it's one of the first best buys that you could do. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful to anybody who wants to grow their collection. And if you want to come hang out on my stream, that's on twitch.tv slash Gabby Sparts. I stream every weekday in the afternoons, mountain times, and we play lots of arenas. So I would love to see you there. See you later.